Good morning, everyone. So glad that you can join us wherever you're watching this right now. Truth be told, I for one will be very happy when, when we can all be together again, enjoying each other's company in person. Why don't we start out with some prayer? Lord Jesus, thank you for the honor of letting you, letting us worship you today. Uh, thank you, Lord, for gathering us all together wherever we are. I pray, Lord, that we can just um, focus on you right now and we let all other distractions just fall to the wayside, that we focus on your word, we focus on praising you, worshiping you, learning from you, Lord Jesus. And uh, Lord, thank you for that sanctifying work you do in our hearts. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We pray all these things in your holy name. Amen. So as we are entering our 10th week of not meeting together, can you believe it's been 10 whole weeks? I'm sure we can all share how this quarantine season has been a, a sanctifying work for so many of us. Just our schedule slowing down a bit and hopefully having a greater focus on God and our families and what our priorities really need to be. This has been a time to reflect and see really what's deep in our hearts, especially with seeing who and what we are giving way to. Who are we giving way to and what are we giving way to? Do we give way to fear and panic? Or do we give way to God and surrender to him? Do we give way to worry and anxiety? Or do we give way to the Lord and serve him? And by serving him, we naturally will serve others. This has just been a, a great opportunity to let the Holy Spirit search us and try us and prepare us, not only for this time, but for the next time we go through a crisis. There will be a next time when this is over, guaranteed. This is the third message in our sermon series entitled, For Such a Time as This. And if you remember in week one, we talked about a time for a greater dependence on God. Last week, we talked about a time for seeking a greater discernment from God. And today, we will be looking at the importance of needing a greater boldness for God. We can be bold for Christ. We can stand up, we can speak the truth, and we can show the truth with our actions. So, I think I'm going to start off like this. How many times? Have we had the chance to speak the truth of Jesus Christ to someone and we never really got around to it because of fear? That is not meant to shame us or guilt us in any way. It's just something for us to ponder right now. How many times has that happened in our lives? How many times have we had a chance to share our testimony with someone and we stop because of the possibility of rejection or even being mocked. I know that has happened to me in my life and I'm sure it has for you as well. So whether we are, are at home with our families or at work or in our neighborhood or just at Walmart with the uncomfortable masks over our face, how do we be bold for Christ and stand up and proclaim him Especially during trying times like these, when silence almost seems easier and is more comfortable. How do we fight for what we believe in with discernment from God when our insecurities and our flesh at times tells us to stop and back away? How do we share Christ when our society tells us to stand down and be quiet? You know, having Christ in our hearts and then allowing the Holy Spirit, Spirit full access to every part of our life. That is how we live a, an intentional Christ-like boldness in our life. We are going to be starting out of the book of Acts this morning. Acts chapter 4. 
It's actually going to be Acts 4, verses 13 through 20. So you can turn there right now, get there on your device. And as you're going there, let's not forget something. When Jesus was on trial, all of his closest friends fled in fear. And even Peter denied him three times. But let's also not forget and look back at how these early Christians acted when they finally surrendered to Christ and they had the Holy Spirit flowing through their heart. In Acts chapter 4, we see particularly Peter and John addressing the Sanhedrin after they were arrested for preaching and teaching and healing in Jesus' name. And that's where we pick up right now. Acts 4, starting with verse 13. It says, Now when they, the rulers, saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could not say anything against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside from the council, they conferred amongst themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For indeed, that a notable miracle has been done through them, and that is evident for all who dwell in Jerusalem. And we can't deny that. But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them, that from now on they speak to no other man in this name. Verse 18 continues. It says, So they called them, Peter and John, and they commanded them not to speak nor teach in the name of Jesus Christ. But Peter and John answered them and said, Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you be the judge. For we cannot speak but the things we have seen and the things we have heard. That right there is confidence in Christ. Peter never again would deny his Savior, no matter what the cost of the sacrifice was. Peter and John and the other disciples would not back down. And neither should we. Today, most of us know that Christians that live in the Middle East and in Asia and in Africa are being persecuted and dying as martyrs every single day for Christ. And here in the U.S., we are just at the very beginning of facing persecution and being silenced for Christ. The Bible states that persecution will become greater in the end times. So that being the case... Are we ready to face that when it comes? And are we ready to face it with boldness rather than just trying to get by and survive through it? There are specific times in our life that really call for boldness. For instance, maybe speaking up at our workplace over some type of injustice or, or moral problem. Maybe it's standing up for a family member or friend who's being bullied or badly mistreated. Maybe it's even going through a hard health journey. This past year, I have undergone a, a procedure called prolotherapy. Prolotherapy is a series of 40 injections in the need to regenerate cell growth and just to repair the knee joint itself. Now, I'm not too squeamish with shots and, and needles, but 40 at one time, that's not really my idea of fun or comfort. But I realized to get through this and to let them even do something like that to me, I had to be mentally and emotionally bold or the procedure wasn't even going to take place. I wouldn't agree to it. And that showed me that people can develop mental boldness when faced with physical and emotional ordeals and tests. However, this is not the type of boldness 
that Peter and John displayed here in Acts. Let me, let me share a powerful example of an intentional Christ-like boldness lived out between a, a Christian couple who dedicated their whole life to Christ. So shortly after World War II, the Romanian government was trying to suppress Christianity. Richard and Sabina Wormbrandt were starting to be disgusted by the actions of their fellow Christian leaders who were beginning to express loyalty and actually agree with communism in their country. And at a big, huge conference, Sabina turned to her husband, Richard, and told him to stand up and to wash away this disrespect and this shame off Christ's face that was being spoken at this conference. And Richard replied to Sabina, if I do stand up right now, you will lose a husband. And Sabina shot right back at her husband and said this, I don't wish to have a coward as a husband. So Richard immediately stood up and in front of 4,000 delegates declared that the church's duty is to glorify God and Jesus Christ alone. You know, we may never be in a situation like that, but are we bold enough to accept the sacrifice that God calls us to do? Sabina knew the cost and she weighed it out and counted it. They both did. But Sabina also knew the likelihood of persecution then against herself and their son. Life as they knew it would be gone. But they also knew that Jesus would never forsake them or leave them to fight this on their own. When Richard was in prison being tortured by the communists, he and his fellow Christians that were locked up with him would sing songs to God and they were so thankful that they actually had instruments to accompany them as they sang out to Christ. You know what their instruments were? It was the chains they were in. The wrist and the leg shackles. They would actually use the chains to bang on the floor as they'd be singing, as they'd be singing out to Christ and praising him. They used them and looked at them as instruments. That's amazing. Listening and obeying God usually does not come at a convenient time, does it? There's usually a cost associated with that. Again, people can develop a mental boldness when faced with physical and emotional ordeals and tests. But outside of Jesus Christ and outside of the Holy Spirit living within us, we are unable to develop spiritual boldness. That is why Peter and John were so bold. That is why Richard and Sabina were so bold. They had Christ in their heart and they gave God complete control. So we can be as tough as they come when it comes to facing all sorts of physical challenges and even mental roadblocks. But we can almost be cowards at times, as Sabina Warmbrandt said, when we're talking about living God's truth in a bold way. So my question for all of us, starting with me, is are we bold for Christ? Are we bold for Christ in our lives right now? Now, if, if we have thoughts of, you know, I think I could do this for Christ, but I, boy, I don't think I'd be able to go that far. Or maybe, you know what? I don't know if I'd be able to give up this way of life I live right now. Or maybe, you know what? This isn't just, that's not my personality. This is, that's not me. I don't think I'd be able to do that. If we've ever had thoughts like that, that's okay. Because that's the Holy Spirit showing us where we need to surrender more. He will gently 
show that and put that on our hearts and in our minds. I'm convinced of that. We need to let God fully have control over our life so he can control not only all we say, but even more importantly, all we do. Our boldness was actually bought by Jesus Christ. It was bought by Christ on the cross. So we are guaranteed of the truths in Scripture. Let me just share a few of them with you. We'll start with Ephesians 3, verses 11 and 12. It says this, According to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. We can look at Luke 12, verses 4 and 5. It says, And I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who can kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do to it. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has the power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. Then we can look at Romans 8, 31 and 32. What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? And then finally, Hebrews 4, 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace and help in time of our need. That's boldness right there. So even though you might be in a situation where a person says something rude to you or mean to you, or maybe even the organization you work for might even go so far as to stop your paycheck and affect, affect you financially. Or even if we get persecuted in our life, in the future here, to the point of having our life in danger. If we are sealed in Jesus Christ, we do not have to quiver. We do not have to shake. Nothing should separate us from Christ. Nothing can separate us from Christ. We must all remember God's in control. We can stand on faith. We can stand on his word. And we can be bold for Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit will enable us to do that. Because here's the truth. Satan knows that once we become a Christian and give our lives over to Christ, that Satan has lost control over our soul. He knows that. But he will continue to try to deceive and to put down and to hurt and manipulate us in any way that we can, any way that he can. Because the enemy does not want us to live a victorious life in Christ. He wants us to just close up into a shell and never come out and share Christ with anyone. But the Holy Spirit is the one who enables us to be courageous in the face of trials and adversity like that. And then we can share boldly our testimony, lovingly, without fear. I am not a theologian by any means, and probably you're not either. And we don't have to be, because we all have a testimony. Everyone does when they come to Christ. So that one step at a time change that we see in ourselves and that other people can see in us as we are walking out our Christian faith, that proves that God is not done with us yet and that he is in our hearts changing us one step at a time. Our testimony is meaningful, and we can share that testimony with others. We can tell others what Christ saved us from with always keeping the emphasis on Christ and, 
and not our old way of life, not on our old sin. Now, there is a, a flip side to this. The enemy always makes sure there's a secular flip side. Some people might say that those who follow other religions, such as Islam and Hinduism and Buddhism, they can have a changed life as well. To that I say, there's one main difference. They are all still lost because they are working for their salvation. They are still trying to earn it. Christians already have our salvation. It is freely given to us because of Jesus Christ and his ultimate sacrifice for us. No one can earn their salvation. Past, present, and future, it cannot be done. It can only be done through Jesus Christ. So the key question here is this. Where is spiritual boldness found? Well, let me tell you a few places where it definitely cannot be found. It's not found in our own motivation. It's not found in our own discipline. It's not found in our, in our own desire to have it. We don't find it in ourselves. We don't find it in our own pockets. We, don't, we do not train for it with some psychological exercise despite what any secular self-help book says. Rather, our spiritual boldness is found in Jesus Christ. It's found in the Holy Spirit of God living in us. In Christ, we are bold to speak. In Christ, we are bold to share our testimony. In Christ, we are bold to protect others. In Christ, we are bold to walk out our journey in faith, living for him. And in Christ, we are bold to have endurance and perseverance and to not quit when the going gets tough. Boldness also does not necessarily require us having to walk through something dangerous or scary every time. It simply means that we are to share God's love wherever we walk and whenever we walk. That's what boldness is. So in this season of quarantine that we're currently in, believe it or not, this season will pass and something will eventually come into its place and challenge us, even, challenge us again probably had to at a greater degree. But may we never forget as Christians that we are built for hard times. We are built for difficult seasons because we have a never-ending hope and we have never-ending promises from God. And we can share that with the rest of the world. We can have a greater courage and we can have a greater boldness in Christ. We can rest in that, and we can have peace in that. It is time for a greater boldness in God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for the truth of your word. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit dwelling in us and guiding us in all your ways and empowering us, Lord, to be able to accomplish what you ask us to do in Scripture. Lord, thank you that it is not on my shoulders. I would fail on that. That I can let go and let you flow through me. And Lord, wherever you go, I get to follow. Thank you for that, Lord. Lord, I pray that we, as we live in these times that we do have a humble boldness, Lord, for sharing you with others in a loving and truthful way. Lord, let us constantly be going into situations, whether that's at home, on the phone, at social media. Lord, when we're at the store, let us go into situations looking to where we can show your love to others. Lord, sometimes it's a very simple thing of just 
smiling and, and striking up a conversation with someone. But Lord, also there are times when we are called to take a stand and we are called to speak up, even if it's unpopular. Lord, show us the balance there with how to do that in truth, but also in love. Lord, thank you for your Holy Spirit to help us to be bold in those situations. Lord, thank you for working through us and never stopping working on us. We thank you for that, Lord. We love you and let us keep serving you one step at a time. It's in the precious name of Jesus we pray these things. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this message. Again, we can't wait to one day here soon that we can all be together again, worshiping in person and enjoying each other's company. But until then, keep serving God and remember that God is in control. God bless and we will see you soon.